The seven star terror event for Embor is returning this weekend. It is going to be running from the 21st of June until the 23rd, and it will be accompanied this weekend by the five star terror spotlight events for Blissey. You're going to give out a lot of large and XL candies as well as terror shards. The Embor for its second time out is going to offer up a lot of high cost items, including her Mystica. We can cover all of the details of this raid if we hop over to Cerebi and take a look at what it is going to offer up when we go up against it. So running from the 21st of June until the 23rd, we're going to see the Embor return in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It is going to have its electric terror typing level 100. It will have its reckless ability and the moves it will have is going to be Flare Blitz, Drain Punch, Wild Charge and Head Smash. Bulk Up and Heat Crash are its additional moves. It will have the Mightiest Mark, can never be shiny and will have a brave nature. It can only be catchable once per save file. And like we've already mentioned, it will have a lot of good high cost items that are up for grabs every time you beat this. So farming it repeatedly over the weekend while it's running is going to be advisable especially for the selection of Herba Mystica that all have a 3% chance of dropping every time you beat Embo in this raid. So the build that we're going to feature in today's video is going to be Ursa Luna. I know not everyone has access to Ursa Luna because it is something that is exclusive to Pokemon Legends Arceus but if you are able to trade this into your copy of Scarlet and Violet, it is going to be probably the fastest, most consistent way to farm Herba Mystica over this weekend. Now, the Ursa Luna is going to be a ground and normal type Pokemon. It is going to have the ground terror typing. A held item is going to be the Shell Bell, level 100, and all of its IVs are going to be hyper trained, so set to 31. Just make sure you do that coming into this raid. It is going to have the move set of Belly Drum, Charm, Earthquake, and then Drain Punch. Just bear in mind that Charm and Drain Punch are TMs. Belly Drum is an egg move, so you're going to have to transfer that onto the Ursa Luna. And then Earthquake is a TM as well that it does require. The EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in attack, 200 EVs in defense, and then 56 EVs into that speed stat. So you should have a raw speed stat of 150. That is so important for this strategy to work. You are going to be with that speed stat outspeeding the Embo in this raid, and that's really important for you to be able to do. And the ability is the next important thing, which is going to be Guts. So when you do get burned, it is going to boost your attack stat with that burn condition. So that is the Ursa Luna. Of course, as well, we have got other videos on the channel from when the first phase of the Embo went live. Featuring the Annihilate build as well, probably one of the most consistent builds as well going into this very fast and something that I would definitely recommend if you already have an Annihilate in your game. It's available in the base games as well, so going to be accessible to everyone despite what version of Scarlet or Violet you have. A very good option. Check out the video. It'll be linked in the top right hand corner now for you as well as in the description and also the Armor Rouge as well, which is a unique build. More available to you Scarlet players unless you are playing Violet and you have acquired an Armor Rouge already from a trade or a raid event that we've had in the past. But again, another very consistent option that you're going to be able to utilize over the weekend to good effect to beat this Embol. But we'll jump into the raid now. I'll show you how quickly you can run through with this Ursa Luna. And honestly, it's going to be a lot of fun. So when you first come into the raid against the seven star Embo using Ursa Luna, it's going to be a bit of a different setup than we've had in previous raids because we're not going to be doing anything for the first minute of this raid. We're going to just literally sit and wait for the raid timer to tick down because we need it to get to that 90% mark. When it hits that mark on the raid timer, it is going to at that stage nullify all stack boosts on our side of the field. And that's what we're waiting for. So we'll be right back when that stat nullification happens when the raid timer hits 90%. There we go, the raid timer ticking over to the 90%. It is going to nullify stats and abilities on our side of the field. And this is the only time it's going to do it. So that's why we're waiting for it. Once that's happened, we'll lock in with our first turn. We're going to go straight away for a belly drum. And it doesn't matter if you have an intimidate Pokemon on your side of the field or not. This strategy will work. It's going to lock in with the drain punch, but we are going to be able to take that pretty comfortably with the EV spread. The only thing that can go wrong here is if it does get land a critical hit. Turn two, we're going to lock in with the Drain Punch. This is going to do not a great deal of damage. Our attack is at plus six. We have lost half of our health for that trouble. But the Drain Punch is going to be able to do enough damage with that Shell Bell item to get our health topped up completely. 
so we're able to go through the rest of this raid pretty comfortably now we're just chasing down the time where we can terrestrialize in this raid so we need to use three drain punches pretty much this stage we are going to see the shield go up now but we're going to be at that point where we are going to be just going for these drain punches recovering the health off as we go and waiting until we can terrestrialize and use that earthquake so another drain punch turn two or turn three really we've got one more drain punch to use after this but the most important thing at this stage is just making sure that we are staying healthy with our Ursa Luna. We're not in any trouble about getting knocked out at this stage. You can see the drain punches coming out. They are doing a good amount of damage, but not anything that we need to be concerned about at this stage. You can see how important it is to have that 150 speed stat to outspeed the Embo with the EVing. We are going to see that Embo go for the stat nullifications that drops on its side of the field, but not going to really matter because we don't have an Intimidate user on our side of the field. We aren't lowering any of the stats with the strategy that we're applying in this raid. So another drain punch. Next turn, we are going to be able to terrestrialize. We are going to take another drain punch for our trouble, taking us down to just below health, half health really at this stage. But now we're in a position where we can terrestrialize and start doing some big impactful damage. We're going to lock in with that earthquake. We are going to terrestrialize as well. You're going to be able to see the impact this Ursa Luna can have in this Embo raid is going to be very quick. And although we do waste a little bit of time at the start of the raid, we're going to be able to catch up with that very quickly and probably finish it well before any of the other raid Pokemon that we featured on the channel are able to beat it anyway. So here we go. Here's that plus six earthquake coming out from the Ursa Luna doing some nice damage. And the most important thing here is it's going to take away our weakness to fighting type attacks. So these drain punches that are going to come out aren't going to be doing as much and we're also able to do maximizing damage now here we go if you get burnt as well it's going to activate your guts ability it's going to mean that your damage output is going to be more it's what we're searching for in this raid normally in these raids you're kind of wanting to avoid that secondary effect from the flare blitz but really with the saluna you're wanting to get burnt so you'll see the damage output here going to be even bigger going to be able to break that shield right now from the Embo, we're going to recover all of that health back. And we're going to be probably at the point where the Embo does set up those double bulk ups. So that's the next thing that we need to watch for. It's going to remove the negative effects on its side of the field. The shield broken now at this stage. Another flare blitz coming out from the Embo. We might have broke the shield before it is going to go for those bulk ups. So flare blitz coming out. Going to take a bit of burn damage, but that's fine. We don't see the bulk ups just yet. So if you do this quick enough, you are going to get to the situation where the bulk ups aren't something that you're going to see just yet in the raid and we are going to get to the point where we are going to get some big damage off onto this embo 50 percent of the the raid time is still intact and this is the turn where we see those bulk ups come out from the embo it is going to boost its attack stat by two stages its defense stat by two stages and it is going to be able to hit a lot harder going into this next turn but we will be able to take a flare blitz if it is fired out from the Embo. Now we do see a huge crash come out and it is going to be into another one of the partnering Pokemon on our side of the field. And this is the turn after it uses those two bulk ups, whenever it does it in the raid, the next turn, just go for a charm, reduce that attack stat back down to neutral because we don't want to be taking those plus two attacks. I mean, at this stage in the raid, we could have just locked in with an earthquake and it would have been done. But I want to do it for the example of the raid where sometimes you're going to be at the point where it bulks up straight after the shield's broken and that's what you want to try and to do to nullify the ability of the embo picking up the knockouts here so we do take two attacks for our trouble which kind of shows i guess the importance of the charm and then we can lock things up with that final earthquake here we could have done it a little bit quicker but for the example of this raid you want to be using the charm after it's used those two bulk ups that's what you want to be doing and the plus six belly drum Ursa Luna going to be very quick in running through this Embo and one of the best ways I think personally for farming Herba Mystica if you're wanting to take advantage of that feature with this raid over the weekend and it's as easy as that just make sure that your stats line up with the exact stats that I did when previewing the Ursa Luna build at the start before coming into the raid we don't get any Herba Mystica there but that's not anything to worry about because we can run through this very quickly and it is going to be a very nice option if you've got Ursa Luna in your games. Like I say, if you haven't, there's the Annihilate that we've covered on the channel as well, as well as the Armour So lots of options to go in for consistency and speed in this raid. Now, once you've beat the raid, if you are wanting to farm it this weekend, you need to come onto your map. You need to respawn this raid event. Come down into your system settings, then down into system, then into date and time. Make sure you synchronize clock for the internet is off. Come into date and time options. Just toggle through these, hit OK. 
and then come back into your game and all of the dens will respawn on your map. You'll get a new seven star terror raid event den on your map like you can see here. You'll be able to head over it and just repeat exactly what we've just done to farm this event over the weekend while it's running. If you found today's video useful, please drop a like on the video. Just help share it around in the community, help it share it around to make it easier for people to do this raid. Of course, if you haven't gotten a Saluna like we mentioned earlier on in the video, then you can alternatively use the Annihilate, which a lot of you will have accessible in the base games of either Scarlet and Violet or that Armor Rouge as well. But the Ursa Luna is probably going to be the fastest way to run through and farm Herba Mystica over this weekend. If you found the video useful, of course, do drop that like, do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think the next seven star terror raid event will be. Is it going to be that Feraligate or is it going to be Sceptile or even Incineroar? We've got a few Pokemon left from the remaining starter Pokemon left in Scarlet and Violet. So it'd be interesting to know what you think it will be. Of course, we will cover all of the details as soon as that does go live on the channel. But for now, friends, that is everything for today's video. I hope you have a lot of fun with the Embo over this weekend while it's running and have a lot of luck with those Herba Mystica drops. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.